Kentha has officially been confirmed by ArenaNet with their latest expansion trailer. I'm sure you have seen it by now. We also know the name of the Kentha expansion, which is going to be End of Dragons. On stream people asked me to do a reaction or an analysis about it, but I want to do a little more than that and show the landmarks that are shown in the trailer in the original game as well. Let's roll the trailer one more time. This land, it's a monument to mortal resilience. They built new lives upon the very thing that sought to end theirs. Portals are little flames, brilliant, hot, then gone. Those who face eternity easily forget what a lifetime means, what an ending means. You know it doesn't have to be this way. No, Kunavine, it does. They need me. Now, the first shot I'd like to talk about is this Asian-themed gate. You see this purple cloud in front of it, and this is Miasma. This is an illness or a debuff from the original Guild Wars, which can only be found in Kantha. When you start your journey in Kantha, there are a number of missions where you have to go through these fields of Miasma. This debuff or disease would spread between creatures of the same kind, so from human to human, Norn to Norn, etc. You could only play as humans back in the original Guild Wars, but you had heroes, NPCs that assist you, that could spread the Miasma between each other. Miasma could only be removed by Zonra, a Canthan unicorn you could summon at shrines by ringing a bell. From the looks of the trailer, it seems that Miasma is still there. Maybe it would play a role in the new expansion. The gate you saw in the trailer can be found all over Xingzhe Monastery, the tutorial island. This means that Xingzhe should still be intact after all those years. Many of the structures we see from Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 are now destroyed or have vanished. Lion's Arch is an example of that. But time will tell if this is actually true. Then we have these bells. I don't quite know where they came from. I cannot recall a place in the original Guild Wars where they can be found. So let me know in the comments if you know. The banners a few shots ahead can also be seen all over the original Guild Wars. Nothing interesting there. They are just signposts that can be found near every town. But that bridge in the back can also be found in the original Guild Wars. I can't quite recall where I've seen it, but on screen you should see where I found it. I believe it was in some sort of mission in Xingzhe as well. Now we see a shot of the slums. This was a big part in the original Guild Wars factions as well. In short, the story of Guild Wars factions is about a mysterious plague. This turns normal humans into afflicted monsters. We have to find out where the plague originated from and prevent it from spreading. These slums had multiple levels and could feel like a maze to navigate through. The slums were ruled by these afflicted but also by a renegade group called the Amfa and the Shuriken, monsters created by Shiro Tagachi. Then we move on to the humans, they seem to be wearing Kenthan clothes as far as I can see. And this is just by looking at the dress of the girl and the man that is wearing a hat. Then we have one of my favorite areas in the original Guild Wars, the Jade Sea. The Jade Sea was a sea that was turned into jade by Shiro Tagachi's Jade Winds. A clan of sailors called the Luxons used to sail, fish and live there. This is why you can find a number of petrified ships all over the Jade Sea. The Luxons adapted to the fact that their precious sea was turned into jade. They have created settlements on the sea that they used to sail on. After the defeat of Shiro, the Jade Sea showed some changes. Small puddles of water started to form below the Jade. This indicates that the Jade was disappearing or melting and it slowly was changing back into water. We do not know if the entire Jade Sea is gone and if it's a normal sea again. But looking at the trailer, it seems that the Jade Sea is still partially intact. And last, we see a dragon named Kunavang. This dragon played a part in the story of the original Guild Wars factions. At one of the last missions, on Waking Waters, we have to defeat Kunavang since she was trapped under the Harvest Temple by Shiro Tagachi. Eventually, Kunavang becomes corrupted by his influence. You, the Kursiks and the Luxons have to unite and defeat Kunavang so you can use her powers against Shiro. Once you defeat her, 
she will help you defeat Shiro. It looks like Kunavang is going to play a bigger role in the End of Dragons expansion. Kunavang seems to be talking to another female dragon, person or entity in the trailer, but we do not know who that was. People have pointed out that this was Aurene, but this was quickly denied by one of the narrative leads at ArenaNet. She said on Twitter that she will voice this new mysterious character. Overall, I really love the trailer. When I watched it first, I thought it was nice. The second time, I loved it even more, and now I'm just repeating it every once in a while. And I honestly think that this is one of the best trailers ArenaNet have ever released. The music, the landmarks and the voice acting are extremely well done. I think the End of Dragons expansion is extremely promising if this is the quality they are trying to deliver. I'm sure this will also re-attract former Guild Wars 1 players since they are very familiar with the landmarks that were shown in the trailer. Oh and don't forget to check out Wooden Potato's video about the subject, he dives a little deeper into the trailer. Want to stay up to date? Make sure to subscribe to my channel, make sure to give it a like and share it with your guildies. It helps out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!